In this video, I'm going to explore to see what happens when you put Celestron's cheapest alt azimuth mount on a wedge. Hi, my name is Chris, and welcome to my channel. For anyone new to astronomy, telescope mounts come in two main varieties, alt azimuth and equatorial. Alt azimuth mounts move up and down and left and right relative to the ground. Equatorial mounts move up and down and left and right in the plane of the celestial equator. Stars move across the sky in the plane of the celestial equator and around the celestial north pole. Therefore, equatorial mounts are able to track the motion of the stars and deep sky objects and allow for long exposure imaging. Alt azimuth mounts, on the other hand, are easier for us to understand and engineer and are therefore cheaper because they don't track in the plane of the celestial equator, but result in objects rotating around the field of view, something referred to as field rotation. And because they rely on two motors to track objects, it also makes it appear as if the objects move in a zigzag pattern due to periodic error happening in the two perpendicular directions as a result of two motors being engaged at the same time. This is something that you would experience if you tried to image at longer focal lengths with an alt AZ mount. There are different types of equatorial mounts. Most commonly used these days are German equatorial mounts and fork mounts, which are really just alt azimuth mounts placed on a wedge, where the wedge fixes the plane of left and right motion to the celestial equator, counteracting field rotation and allowing the mount to track using a single motor and reducing periodic error to azimuth the least expensive motorized alt azimuth mount from Celestron that I have come across is the Nexstar GT. These sold with cheaper telescopes for about $200 US and came with a database of 40,000 celestial deep sky objects that you could go to. I bought one of these telescopes used last month as an inexpensive way to find and view objects visually. I had low expectations but was pleasantly surprised by what this telescope could do. Check out my previous video if you're interested. What caught my eye when using this telescope was that this cheap little GT mount had an option for EQ North alignment. This is the alignment method used to polar align equatorial mounts. Could this little mount be capable of running on a wedge? In order to find out, I first had to figure out how to attach this mount to a wedge, or for that matter, what to use for a wedge. After scratching my head for a bit, I decided to use a heavy duty steel square bar. I found bolts and washers that would fit the underside of the mount, and I came on the idea of securing the metal bar to a camera tripod, which would allow me to adjust the left to right orientation, as well as the declination angle. I was able to secure the bar to the camera plate using a smaller metal plate that slid underneath, and which I had secured on either side by drilling holes and using bolts. I later found out that the size of a bolt used to secure the GT mount to its own base was a quarter inch, which is the same size bolt that is commonly used in DSLR camera stands. This means that I could have secured the GT mount directly to the camera stand without the use of the bar, but I found that the use of the bar actually helped with the center of gravity of the entire setup, and it also lifted the mount away from the tripod, allowing for freer rotation without worrying that my gear would hit the tripod itself. I attached my ASI 294MC Pro cooled camera with the ZWO Nikon adapter and the Rokinon 135mm astrograph along with a dual band hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 filter. 
I managed to polar align well enough to be able to take 60 second exposures. For anything more than that, I think I would need guiding, and unfortunately, after some back and forth with Celestron support, I was told that Celestron control software, CPWI, would not offer the wedge option for the GT mount. I put in a change request or an enhancement request to support, but since this mount is no longer being offered, I'm not so sure that this request will go anywhere. Still, if you have an X-Star GT mount and you'd like to use it as a star tracker for short-term exposures, you can certainly do that. While doing research on how to use this mount, I came across an exchange from support, which implied that the Nexstar SLT mount, which is, I think, the successor to the GT line, is capable of running on a wedge and supported by CPWI. So I'm currently looking for an SLT mount to be able to test with. If you have an SLT mount, let me know if you've tried this and if it works for you. I was able to find the used SLT mount, and unfortunately what I found was that CPWI does not offer a wedge option for this mount either. I am reaching out to Celestron, hoping that they can put in an enhancement request for the SLT and GT mount, given how popular the SLTs are becoming. I'll be posting updates as I have them. Until next time, thanks for watching and clear skies.